I'm Dr. Kishore Indukuri, and we are going to talk about milk today. Why is this important? 22% uh, of India, world's milk, is produced by India, and we consume most of it, right? We are the largest consumers of milk in the world, right? That is about 4.2% of India's GDP, right? Uh, dairy is the India's largest agricultural commodity, right? About 8 crore rural households depend on it, uh, depend on it, primarily women, right? And we Indians love our milk, right? About we consume on an average about 408 grams of uh, milk per day, right? And um, you know what that, and it is served by 30% uh, of it is served by organized sector. When, when I what I mean by organized sector, it is cooperatives as well as private sector. And uh, you know, the size of the industry is $150 billion and it is growing that, uh, uh, growing at 12% uh, CAGR every year. Right? And uh, why, uh, you know, so all of this seems nice and rosy, right? So what is the problem, right? The, uh, you know, here I like to go a little bit and talk about my background, right? I, I come from a middle class family. I went to IIT Kharagpur for my bachelor's and then um, I went on to do my master's and PhD at University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, after getting my PhD, I worked at Intel Corporation for about seven years. Right? But all along, right, I felt like some kick was missing in our life. I always wanted to do something more. And, uh, uh, and uh, towards the end of it, right, I thought, you know, it is time to come back home and do something. And uh, my grandparents uh, were from agriculture background. So agriculture was always close to my heart. Uh, I thought, you know, why not, you know, get into agri space in India. And um, and as I was researching it, right, my, my uh, our son was about one and a half years old and we were looking for good milk for him. And we felt that there was nobody in that space that would give, that was giving great trusted milk uh, to consumers, right? I thought this was a space that I could take up and, and uh, you know, do something in. And, and that is how, and I was just looking at, uh, uh, you know, literature, newspaper, right? There were constant articles on adulteration in the country, right? A rampant use of antibiotics, uh, you know, uh, uh, use of thickeners, urea, um, you know, sugars. You know, there was a lot of articles about it. And that's when I thought, you know, I could do something. I put together a business, uh, Excel business model. And, um, uh, you know, we named it, uh, uh, you know, Sid's Farm. You know, my wife suggested this name. I thought, you know, this is a promise from a dad to his son saying that we'll produce the best possible milk and that is the milk that we will uh, give to our consumers, right? But li little did I know about this industry, right? Um, you, know, um, you know, we started with a goal that we'll do great milk and uh, we put together a small uh, dairy farm. We leased a facility then and um, uh, 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 brought 20 cows and, and started our first dairy farm on the outskirts of Hyderabad, uh, right? And um, this is how our, our idea was born. Uh, but, um, you know, a lot of people advise me not to get into dairy farming. It is a difficult inter industry, but I still went ahead and do it, right? But as I started to get into it, uh, did I understand all the different things, right? Milking, um, you know, once you get into it, it is 365 days in a year job, right? You, uh, 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 there is no break. There are no festivals. There are no holidays. And, um, and then, you know, that was still okay for us, right? Um, you know, a lot of labor issues. We were, we, we were handling all of that, right? This was in 2013-14, right? But then when we started producing milk and we took it to sell it outside, all we were getting was 13 to 15 rupees a liter, right? Um, and then we, we figured out that, uh, you know, we had to sell it on our own. That is the only way to survive. And that is what we did. But how do we sell it on our own? So every weekend we would go sit in a community, uh, mark, talk about our milk, saying that, uh, you know, this is our own dairy farm. And, um, you know, this is great milk. Um, you know, great feed is given to the animals. We would market our own milk. Um, and uh, talk to customers and slowly get get the customers, right? But <clears throat> uh, uh, as I said, to, uh, early 2013, um, our first, uh, <clears throat> uh, we started selling our first packet of milk and uh, 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 we started selling our first, first packet of milk and then we really started to understand uh, dairying itself, right? All the labor issues, productivity issues, we were able to figure out. We persevered. What, what I mean by persevered, when we started, we were we were getting about 4 in the morning, 4 to 5 we would milk our cows, 5 to 5.30 we would packet our milk, you know, 5.30 to 6.30 we would transport our milk to our customers and give it to them. But as the demand for our milk increased, uh, right, uh, which means we were doing a good job, you know, that 4 became 3.30, 3.30 became 3. At one point, we were waking up at 2 a.m. in the morning, trying to make sure uh, our, our milk reaches our customers by 6 in the morning. And we were doing that uh, 365 days a year, um, 
twice a day. We were selling our morning milk in the morning, evening milk in the evening. Right? We didn't we didn't really know about the entire dairy industry. Right? That, that is on, that is when we started digging. We started investing in automatic packing machines. Then we invested in a mini pasteurization facility because we felt like um, you know uh, uh, raw milk uh, could be a pub, public health safety risk. So we invested in a small mini pasteurization facility. Started digging into milk. Started understanding milk. Right? And you know started to learn it. We were you know we we faced a lot of issues, accidents, but we persisted. But we persisted. Um, and uh, you know. And then a chance encounter uh, 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 with a manager uh, from Syndicate Bank, uh, 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 Joshi ji, we, uh, he helped us with uh, you know getting a loan, and we bought our own piece of land in 2016 and uh, started putting together our uh, processing facility, a state-of-the-art processing facility. Right. That that is how we got into understanding depth of milk. Uh, uh, right. So. Uh, you know, uh, till then, you know, we didn't really understand dairy. We didn't understand the whole sector, right? But we, uh, we took a step back and, and understood what we were doing, right? One, we were doing production of raw milk. We were producing uh, good quality raw milk. We were processing and packaging it. And then after that, we were also doing the last mile delivery of milk, right? Last mile delivery is actually delivery of milk to our customer's uh, doorstep. And if you do that, uh, then um, you know you also need to have customer support and th we were doing this all of this right this you can call as three separate industries one is production of raw milk itself then uh, processing and packaging and then the last mile delivery right we were doing all three of these right right great thing about this is feedback is always instantaneous if some if there was some problem with the milk customer would call us and tell us you know hey your milk is not great today fix it right and we worked on it fixed it right and 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 we were learning this and and doing this Right. And, uh, you know, see, then, you know, uh, as we were doing this, the farmers who were look, uh, who looked at me initially as crazy and are doing something, you know, started to talk to us. Right. This is when we, um, you know, I also felt right. India, the milk in India is produced predominantly, as I said, by rural uh, households. Right. We felt, um, you know, uh, why not take farmers milk, you know, and, uh, you know, sell it to our customers as well. But we have to make sure that the milk is good. Right. How do we make sure that the milk is good? Right. Uh, uh, right. This is when we felt like we had to understand milk in depth. Right? Let's talk about you know depth of milk, right? So what is milk? Milk is nutrient-rich liquid food that is produced by mammals, right? And um, to put it simply uh, in uh, you know science terms, milk is water and solids. Now you can classify solids into fat and solids that are not fat, right? Solids not fat is also called SMP or skimmed milk powder, right? So you basically what you do is take the fat out, evaporate all the water. What you are left is with is powder, which is nothing but SNF, right? So for example, right, if you take cow's milk, it has about roughly about 87% water, 4.4 uh, 4 to 4, 4.3% fat. When I say fat, you know, there are also uh, vitamin A and vitamin D in it, right? Um, uh, in that fat. And then there is a, a solids, not fat, which is around 8.7% in which you have protein, you have uh, lactose, which is nothing but a carbohydrate, and then you have all the other minerals and vitamins in it. Okay, so this is essentially a milk. You know, I know I'm boring with you with a little bit of science here, but this is important to understand, right? Um, what milk is because we were uh, we had to understand milk then, right? Because we started to work with the farmers, we want to make sure that the milk is good, whatever we take for them. So we started to test milk, right? Initially, we started with milk testing kits, right? And then uh, you know, as we started to test more and more. You know, we were uh, we were burning through a lot of milk testing kits. Then that's when we, we thought, <coughs> why not you know figure out testing on our own, right? So what would go uh, uh, what could um, go wrong with milk, right? One, a farmer is not getting paid well. So what does he do? He adds some thickeners to milk, right? So what are the common thickeners? Sugar, cheap sugar, cheap salt, uh, urea. Right, uh, starch. These are common thickeners. So this is when a farmer is tempted to do it because you know he feels that he can get better price if he adds this. Right. So uh, we figured out to uh, testing methods to detect these first. Yeah, right. This is not ro rocket science. These are simple test te uh, test techniques you can develop. So we've developed those. Then what what else could go wrong with? The other th the next thing is preservatives. Right. Why? See, milk is produced by a cow or a buffalo for its baby. Right? That is how the nature designed it. Right? So milk will break if you leave it outside. Right? Um, so the best way to uh, keep milk uh, safe is by chilling it. This is the best way of 
preserving milk is by chilling it right chill milk to 4 degrees your milk will not break and why why is that because um, you know the lactose present in milk gets converted into lactic acid right because of bacteria if you chill milk right the bacteria cannot grow milk is food for us milk is also food for bacteria if you chill milk the bacteria cannot grow so milk will not spill so that is the best way of preserving milk is by chilling it and that is what that is the only thing that you should be doing but because there is not enough milk chilling infrastructure in the country preservatives like hydrogen peroxide baking soda caustic soda formalin get added to milk right we see this very commonly in milk right and we look for that we test for that we make sure that our milk does not have any of this right neither the thickeners nor preservatives then the next bigger problem facing milk is antibiotic see we fall sick you know if we fall sick typically the thing that you do right uh, the fever does not go away you act, you take a paracetamol or a dolo right if still the fever does not go away doctor can sometimes prescribe you antibiotics right similarly the animal falls sick right antibiotics are given to animals right but but the bottle of injection clearly says do not drink this milk it says withdrawal period is 5 to 7 days you're not supposed to drink that milk right but it is seldom practiced in the country right we take this very seriously right every can of milk is tested for antibiotics it tests for three classes of antibiotics present in milk tetracyclines beta lactams and sulfonamides right we figured out how to test for antibiotics and screen antibiotics out we tell farmers tell us and do it if you have to give an antibiotic tell us so we can separate that milk out right and then we we have a hplc we look for hormones present in milk so test 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 is our mantra right uh, right uh, and uh, you know and also we look at you know how can we put how can we chill milk so you don't have to preserve it see how can you chill milk on time right right when a farmer milks right within an hour and half two hours you have to chill milk this is the solution for india right if you can get to uh, really good mbrt values which are attained by chilling milk on time right we can get to great quality milk we truly believe right i truly believe right indians produce the best milk our rural households take care of their cows and buffaloes they treat them like their own family they take care of their cows only if we can chill their milk right test the milk to make sure you know uh, the farmers are not adding anything test their milk chill it on time we, i truly believe that we can produce the best milk right so this is how this is what we practice every day at sets farm this is how you know now right this is what we figured out initially we started small we started with a dairy farm but as we started to progress you know, right we we quickly figured right if we can do this we have a recipe that we can uh, do across the country and be part of this revolution where you know we we produce uh, great milk in the country right so um, i know a lot of young people are uh, uh, you know uh, are here right so see what you know how how are we able to uh, survive in this right this is through sheer perseverance we got hit many times there were accidents that came our way <clears throat> there were a lot of things that happened in the last uh, right um, no matter what uh, happened we persevered we never gave up right we kept our head down we kept on executing we kept on executing and another biggest part of an entrepreneur um, you know uh, landscape should always be keeping a low ego right uh, right when i started the business i you know really i mean the fact that i was selling milk did not really sink in in my early years right you know one day i went to a customer's house because our delivery boy was not there i i gave him a packet of milk um, you know uh, um, uh, customer uh, said are doodh wala aaya re right that is when you know i it it a, you know the thing really sank in that yes i'm sinking milk and i'm proud to be a milkman selling uh, great milk right and always right there are several things that happen you know um, you know and uh, keeping ego low Uh, right was was something that i learned from the business i'm i'm grateful for this opportunity that i found as i was solving this problem and you know for me another bigger thing that happened to me as i was doing this is finding purpose for myself all along you know i was i was I mean, you know i was looking for something in life right but you know this endeavor of mine you know producing great milk gave me a purpose right and uh, i feel if i along with our team right can do this for the next 5 10 years right i think we'll i'll we will be a part of great milk in the country right and i would urge you know uh, all the young people you know to take to take up a purpose to solve a problem that gives you a, a strong great purpose for you uh, uh, to search ahead right and in a nutshell to summarize uh, right um, we started with a small idea we started with a dairy farm 
Um, and now we converted that into a model dairy farm where we showcase this to other entrepreneurs in India, uh, anywhere. We showcase this to our uh, consumers, uh, customers who uh, uh, who buy our milk, uh, right? Our consumer, our customer is the one who is funding this effort of ours, right? He is the one that is paying our cust- uh, paying our farmer, right? And uh, <clears throat> and uh, see, we pivoted from a just a model dairy farm. Uh, to a network of farmers now. We work with over 2,000 farmers, right? We have a, a lab, state-of-the-art lab. We, we do over 6,500 tests every day. We look for 66 different parameters in milk, right? And uh, we use dairy tourism, right? As a, uh, as a great way of bringing customers to our place, showcasing entirely what we do. We start with milking a cow, um, you know, chilling, showcasing how we chill our milk, then how, the, how we test our milk, and then how we process and package it, right? Entire thing is shown in a transparent way to our customers, right? And we think, you know, uh, we have a recipe, we've created a recipe that can be replicated, and, um, you know, and, um, and, uh, and we hope that we are able to solve this problem of milk adulteration in the country.